Good evening at 6.30, we'll start the uh, fiscal 22 budget preparation with us is um, Justin Lawrence and Flo Smith. Um, yes, Diane and Tim can go over the proposed highway budget. Okay. So, uh, Tom, are you going to be putting up the budget on the screen for everybody to see? I can if people would like me to do that. Uh, I would like you to do that. I think it might be easier. Hold on one sec. Okay. Well, Tim, I see we have some increases. Got a few small ones, I believe. <laughs> I think we got some you know, good explanations with them too, so. Yeah. Tim, has a new grader showed up yet? Uh, no, I was actually going to tell you guys. Uh, he called me in the end of last week. It was delivered to, into the country on the port on the 11th. And it is due to be delivered in Richmond on the 17th. And they said within, he was open two weeks after that. So the end of the month should be here at town. They just got to put the wing and plow equipment on it in Richmond and then just go over some final stuff with us on how we wanted things set up as far as controls and whatnot. And then it will be uh, ready to be delivered. Yeah. Did you email the uh, that proposed budget? I did. I did twice. I did last week and then I did again this morning because John had asked me to show percentages. So I right. sent that, but there was a package of stuff and there's one up in the package. Okay, I'll check. Also, uh, Tom is supposed to be putting it on the screen so we can all look at it at the same time. Perfect. And that's Thank what you. he's working on right now. Yep. Ah, uh, treasurer position. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and it's highway. I'm showing this yep. highway. Perfect, thank you. Okay. If you'd like, we could begin while Tom is working on it, trying to get this on um, to show up. Does everybody have that highway budget proposal in front of them? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Absolutely. why don't I be, okay. Why don't I begin, and I'm sure that Tom will catch up and get this on here. So uh, just to begin um, with summer wages uh, for the roads. Now that is a decrease, even though I'm saying that we, I'm, I'm proposing a 2% increase because that's what we have done the last four years. Um, it is showing a decrease because we have two new people that have replaced uh, two other people that were at a higher rate. So that's where this is sl slightly lower amount for that one. Um, and then in the overtime, which is the next line over, I, you know, Tim and I talked about this and we're saying, obviously it's, we're showing a, you know, a 48% increase. And the reason that we're doing that is that summer, um, summer overtime is becoming far more prevalent. Uh, we are seeing that there are, there is a lot more road work that needs to be done in the summer that is going over and above the regular hours that we could work. The other issue that we had is um, when they are doing work on the culvert, is that going to require more time and more overtime for our highway department? So um, that's why we're showing an increase. Obviously, and all of these things can be changed, but that's our proposal, and that was why we're showing that particular uh, increase for that. Okay. And then uh, the next one is the roadside mowing and tree trimming. Now we're increasing that by a thousand dollars. And I, the reason for that, and I'm just looking for my notes that I had on that out right there. Okay. So what we're saying for the roadside mowing is normally we do one pass and that one pass is $6,000. However, we have a lot of residents that say that pass 
is not good enough. They need something more. So what Tim is proposing is that we could rent a machine for $3,400 for one week. And then later after the first pass is done, have a second pass and just make sure that everything is cleaned up for everybody. Uh, so that way uh, the roads will be, in, it'll be in better condition. And then uh, we always have tree removal that's in that line item. And we're showing $1,600 because that, that is what we had last year. However, Tim is telling me that he can um, cut trees, that he has um, the training and we have the chainsaw in order to do that. So possibly uh, we could bring that $1,600 to the lower amount and maybe just keep it at the $10,000 level, but we're just proposing you know, this, for this, you know, this time. Does anybody have any questions yet? Not yet. Okay, so I'll move on. Uh, chloride from the summer roads, we did not make a change on that. However, for the last three years, and that's what Tim and I went through, we looked, we looked at the last three years, and we're finding that it's just about that amount every year. It might be a little under 28,000, but it's just pretty much at that level. So it might be 26 or 20, you know, 28 something or 27. So we felt comfortable leaving it at the $28,000 range. Uh, and culvert materials, we felt comfortable leaving that at $10,000. Uh, we don't have any big jobs anticipated. However, there always seems to be issues in the spring that people will have with their culverts. And then our you know, road crew goes and takes care of them. So that's why we're keeping that level at 10,000 at this point in time. Summer equipment repairs, we're leaving that at 30,000. And we are saying though, the loader has rust and it needs tires. So we're thinking that $30,000 should cover it, but it's these type of repairs that we are anticipating. And the loader is getting older, you know, and I don't know when we're gonna replace it, but we are gonna to have to be putting more money into it. So that's why we left it at that level. Uh, the next one is summer equipment fuel. And for that one, uh, we're leaving it at the $20,000 level. However, um, we have not spent that much in the last three years. Either we spent 10,000 or 9,000. And one year we did spend like 19,000 in FY19. Um, however, we're not sure our gas price is gonna go up in the future. Uh, should we leave it at 20,000? So that's where we're proposing it at 20,000 and that's why we're doing that. Uh, the next one is wages, winter roads. And once again, this is the same situation where the people, um, we got two new people that are replacing others that had a higher wage. So um, even though we're proposing a 2% increase, uh, it's still gonna be a decrease overall for that. And the wages over time uh, for the winter, we're looking at the same situation and it just has to do with people that are lower rate. Uh, sand winter roads. So that the, we're proposing more money on that one because it's gonna have to go out to bid. The last two years, we had a proposal from like three years ago that we were able to keep it at the same rate without having to go to bid. We said that we will go, uh, we had up to three years for this particular contract. We just had to renew it every year. And now we don't have that contract anymore because the three years are up. And if we have to put it out to bid, we're not certain that we're gonna be able to get the favorable rate that we've had in the last three years. So that's why we've increased that by 10,000. Once again, that is our uh, thoughts behind that. And salt, we did the same type of thing for salt. Um, we're having, you know, we, we use an average of 1300 tons per year. Um, and we're saying that if, if we have, if we order the right amount and we get it at a state rate and we don't go over that amount, we're fine. However, if we end up using more salt, we have to get what they call uh, it like an emergency rate. This is where we are gonna have to pay more, we're gonna have to find it. And that's why we're afraid that if we were to go over, that we would go over budget. And once again, we don't know much we're gonna use. It seems like the last four or five years, we've had more ice than we've had snow. Um, and so the, right, the icy road conditions have been more prevalent in the last few years, as opposed to getting more snow. So that's why we're proposing that increase once again, this is all subject to change. Uh, winter equipment maintenance repairs, we're keeping that a level 40,000. I don't think that we're anticipating anything more 
than what we've had in the past. Uh, we did buy new tires in FY21, so we think we're probably good on tires, but who knows what kind of breakdowns that we will have. And as our equipment starts to get older, and if we don't replace it, uh, obviously we will have more repairs. So the equipment fuel uh, for the winter, we're keeping that at the same level, and we just never know where that's going to be. Um, then we went to asphalt marking and sealing, and we are leaving that at the same amount as well. And what we're anticipating is that maybe uh, that we would be paving Scott Hill, that would be a project we'd like to do. Uh, we're putting 150,000 in and hopefully we'll go after a grant. If we get the grant, then that will be, you know, that will help us tremendously. But since we can't count on that, uh, we're proposing 150,000 because we do feel Scott Hill does need some work. Then we're going to the resurface gravel and we've increased that just because we think that we need to pay attention to West Hill, Darling Road, East Hill, and Chase Road. All of those need some work. And that's in the opinion of Tim, and Tim could elaborate more on that. Is there anything you want to elaborate on what I've said, Tim, so far? No, not really. But yeah, with the gravel, it's they're, they're roads that were resurfaced right after Irene, and they're really starting to be thin on gravel. We're starting to find a lot of bigger stones and whatnot. So the only way to get rid of them is to cover them. So. Okay. Thanks, Tim. I'll, I'll go on, but thank you for that. Okay. And then bridge maintenance, um, you were talking, I'll ask you again, um, you were talking about Coxbrook and Guinness Road. What are your thoughts on that as far as bridge maintenance? We left it at the $1,500, but we have the only real bridge per se that we have, and it's, it's a wooden deck. So uh, I know this summer we've had a lot of problems with the boards kicking up. We've had been over there three or four different times now and nailing planks back down. So depending on how this winter goes and plowing, it, the deck might be good or it might need a deck next summer. Okay. How much would a deck cost? To Price lumber right now, probably a lot. So we're hoping to let it ride through and there's not a mm -hmm. lot of traffic there. So I'm, um, Anticipating that it'll be all right. Okay. This is on Glennis. Yeah. They right. that was that was done what 10, 15 years ago? Yeah, Gary was there the last yeah. When the guy said that the last time it was done, Gary was still there. So um, you know what I mean? It's it's not like it's a high traffic road, but yeah. There's going to be more people living up there now, and they're trying to sell the farm at the end again. So I know I think it's got new owners in the second place on the left, and I think there's at least four different people living in the first place now. Yeah. So it's it's getting a lot more traffic. I think when they redid did. that uh, bridge, I, I mean, the, the deck, I think they used pressure treated. Yeah, it's, so it's just... It's, it's eight by eights underneath it. And then it's just, um, I, they're like two by twelves for runners. So it would really only just need the runners on it, not a full bridge. Cause the eight yeah. by eights are more than fine. It's just, it's gonna need new two by twelves to drive on. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the next one is road signs. And uh, once again, Tim, uh, you and I talked about that and you were saying we need to have a signage inventory and stands because right now if we close the road, you're handwriting stuff on yeah. paper. Yeah, we ran, you know I mean? We ran into the problem with Fisher Road when we had to close it kind of abrupt. Didn't have a lot of road close signs in there, plywood. So you gotta have them on signposts or whatever. I ended up borrowing some from the state for a short bit of time that were fold up signs on stands for road closers. And um, so I just, I wanna get the inventory for the actual just road signs that we use, you know, flaggers, road work, stuff like that. Get that up a little bit better. Okay. And then guardrails, we were planning on leaving that at the same level, uh, but you're talking about Crosstown, Tim? You were saying that a lot of that was in bad shape? Yeah, a lot of the hill is the guardrails are in pretty bad shape. So just, it's gonna be one of those things that 
you know, I mean, it'd be a lot of money to replace them all at once, but, you know, just little by little start working their way down the hill and resetting them. And because a lot of them are too low for the, for the heights requirement. So if there was ever a vehicle that hit him, hit them, there is a chance that they'd go over them. And then on the workers comp, um, that I, I have the rates from last year. I will not get the new rates until December for this year. Once I get the new rates, I will put that throughout the, um, throughout the budget. But I thought at least we'd have something to look at and we'll have the rates from this past year. So that's why there's no change basically in that. Um, and on the health insurance highway, we're looking at an increase there. And that's because um, before with the people that we had last year, we had uh, two people that were on family plan, one person on single plan, and Tim was not on um, the plan. He was getting the insurance buyout. And currently what we're looking at, and I'm looking at potentially a 7% increase in insurance. Uh, the way it worked out last year is a 7% increase on two person, 5% on a family and 5% on single. So it, it doesn't, not every category has the same amount, but I'm potentially putting it at 7%. However, right now we have got three people on family plan and one on single. And that's why it looks like the rate is going so far, you know, so much higher, but that's because we picked up a person on family plan. And, and plus, like I say, uh, we're not gonna be paying the health insurance buyout this year. So that will decrease. Uh, and then the FICA, they, basically, is going to go down a little bit because our salaries are down. And the FUTA SUTA is the same type of situation. The disability insurance, I looked at with the people that we have now, and I based it on maybe getting like a 1% or 2% increase because the disability and life insurance is not much of an increase. Um, but you'll see that I've made the changes that are, you know, with the people that we have currently. And I think the life insurance is down a little bit because um, the people that we had um, in the highway department were older, so uh, the life insurance is more expensive for them. Okay, and then the health insurance buyback, once again, you're seeing that's a minus 4875 because uh, I'm not anticipating anybody getting the health insurance buyback. Uh, the employee benefits, that is gym memberships, and that's a $350 gym membership per person, so I just times it by four. You know, not that any of the people right now um, are using it in the highway department. However, it is um, something that's an employee handbook that they could potentially use if they chose to. Uh, and then the pension, I base that once again on salaries. Uh, General Insurance Highway, once again, that's last year's. A stormwater state permit is something that we have to have, and that's $3,600. And that I think we have to have annually, right, Tim? The stormwater permit, yeah, that's yeah. the new thing through the state where you have to go through every year. Yeah, and I think um, last year it was like $832, but I believe this year we're going to have to pay the full amount for the entire year. Uh, and then erosion control, let's see what you and I were talking about on that. Um, oh, that's state, that's stormwater, and that's mandated by the state. And if you could speak to that, Tim. It's just... The state's gone through and made a new program where um, they've done classifications for all the roads, gone over them, measured them, slope, ditches for runoff, and now they're starting to require, you know, I mean, when you do a project, whether it's got to be stoned, matted, or just mulched and seeded, or if it can be just left natural, and there's, so there's getting to be more uh, over the erosion control that we need to do, Matt, and then, you know, I mean, the stone, we buy 12 inch minus, seems to hold the best. So we're using more of it. Okay. Uh, the municipal road permit, that's something Dana told me that that was going to be happening every year as well. That yeah. we have to get this it's, permit. I, I believe it's all, it's all in the same program. So. Yeah. That is just, varying rates that you have to pay for varying things for the state that are requirements. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then supplies. I think we said we wanted to go up in supplies. And the reason being that we need tools. If you could speak to that, you said you need to upgrade a leaf blower. Well, that was a discussion, but like for tools and whatnot, and 
the hand tools over at the shop are very unlimited supply, like wrenches and stuff like that. They're older. Some of them are broke. Some only have a box in on one end or an open end. Um, so it'd be nice to upgrade some of the hand tools. So if we have to work on stuff ourselves, we have the capability of doing, fixing it during a storm or whatnot. And then um, as far as the leaf blower goes, um, I, they're called the Buffalo blowers. Uh, a lot of the towns are buying them now. They're, they're saying they're, they're wonderful. Um, and the town of Northfield just bought one. The town of Roxbury has one. The town of Burke has one. Uh, I've talked to a few people. The town of Northfield and Roxbury have their own roadside mowers, so they can buy them that go on a three-point hitch. So they're PTO driven. We don't have a tractor, so the one I looked at was um, it's a self-propelled pull-behind unit would go behind the pickup. It has a wind turbine on it with an adjustable chute that you run from the vehicle. And it blows all the leaf debris, pine needles, sticks off the edge of the road. So when we do fall grading and then um, cleans the ditches and any time of the year, you want to blow a ditch out or along the side of a road. Um, the people from town of Burke said that they've saved more money in uh, water damages and storm damage than it cost them to purchase the blower. The one I got a quote for was, I think right around $7,500. And then Diane said that there is extra money in spots that could come up for yeah. that. If well, we, we do have um, a small reserve for highway equipment that has a reserve that goes back like maybe three or four years. So yeah, we might, I think we have some money in there. Okay, uh, the next one's just advertising, you know, we'll leave that the same, same rate. That would be if we had to advertise to, for a job to, to fill a position in there. Uh, and the training, uh, Tom has asked me to put an additional, um, he wanted to bring it up to $5,000 uh, because our people, um, the, the highway people need more training. So if you could speak to that, Tim, and I don't know if we need, uh, you know, to, to bring it up to that level of 5,000, but if you could just tell, uh, talk to us about it. I'm not sure on the cost of it all going to be, you know what I mean? Um, but for training and stuff, like, need to do flagger training, CPR training. There's a lot of training that's out there. Um, as soon as I've been in contact with a woman from the state, um, just need to sit down with everybody on the computer and set them up a, um, like a username and password so they can log in and start doing some online courses as far as training. Um, but again, with everything that's going on with the COVID and everything else, there's not a lot out there right now that's available for training. There's some virtual stuff, but there's no hands-on stuff. So okay. just gonna be working on it slowly as things kind of open back up or progress and see where the virtual stuff goes for now. Okay. Uh, and on the telephone, I'm leaving at the same rate uh, for the highway that you, is mostly cell phones. Um, the garage maintenance utilities, um, I don't think we had anything on that. Oh yeah, wait a second, you said the walls have holes. Yeah, well that was kind of the other thing, like I was wondering what everybody's opinion is on like the town garage and as far as maintenance and what the long, long-term outlook would it be you know what i mean there's, there's siding the siding been hit with trying to remove snow there's holes in the bottom of the walls uh the doors the doors are new but the casings are old and rotted um the inside probably could really use a paint job so it's i mean is there do we want to start you know, slowly working on upgrading things or, you know, look at, um, you know, I mean, getting an appraisal at redoing it all at once 
or how how does everybody feel about that? Okay. So I, I guess we'll go on with the, you know, with the budget at this point, but then we can always get back to that. Uh, let's see. And then we're talking about the garage energy improvements, which is once again, based on that type of situation that you're just talking about. We need to put some money into the building. Uh, and then the trash removal this year, we put in at $1,500 because you have an abund overabundance of tires again, don't you? Yeah, they're starting to get another pile of tires up there. They got rid of mm -hmm. a bunch of them a couple of years ago um when they were doing it cheap and then the price has kind of gone up and and these are tires you're picking up along the road right it's not yep. our no no it's roadside treasures it's green up day yeah. stuff like that yeah. just people that throw stuff out on the roadside randomly yeah okay and then the street lights that we're gonna leave the same price uh because that's your power Traffic lights, once again, is power. Um, we're going to leave that the same. And miscellaneous, so we'll leave that at 500. You know, you never know when you need it. Uh, and the uniforms, uh, we brought that up in price because, you know, we've got $7,500 for uniforms. In the last three years, we've had at least 10000 we spent each year. So I know that Dana had a contract with, who's a uniform company that you used him? Uh, Sintas. Yes. Yeah. Us. Yeah, and so I don't know where that contract is, but I think it's a contract he signed like maybe last year and included in the uniforms is boots and then we get the shirts too. You know, we get the summer shirts of the uh, the ones that are fluorescent. So yeah. I do think we need to bring that to the, to the amount that we're actually spending. And I guess that's it overall for you know, our proposal at this point. And overall, uh, we're looking at an increase right now of 6.47% based on this information and obviously we're just at the you know talking stages so but at least we wanted to give you you know our thoughts on this the other thing that tim and i were talking about and i know i proposed this before at least with dana every year is we'd like to get some kind of a committee together to go over what we have for equipment when we need to replace equipment um so that way we'll know, I, you know, when we, every year we think, okay, well, we need to replace a loader or a grader or whatever we need, but it'd be nice to have, uh, you know, a committee that would say, well, these are the proposed things that you, you know, each year that you need to, um, to upgrade. And then we have to start saving the money for it so that we can, instead of always having to borrow the money that we could, um, you know, have use it out of our reserves and which we do not have that. We've been trying to build towards that but every time we build towards that, all of a sudden we buy another piece of equipment. So we're just, you know, we're proposing that somewhere down the road and, and hopefully soon we can get a committee together that would start looking at that and then they could do, they could help us with our proposals to um, when we do the budget. So that's all Tim and I have, I believe. Are there any questions? Nicely presented, thank you. Thank you. I just have an overall process question on mm -hmm. how, how does this go? I don't want to wait and then, you know, you know, share my feelings at the end after, you know, you've done all this work, Diane. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, th we haven't, Tim's the first one to go, but, you know, a six and a half percent increase is just, um, you know, it's just unrealistic for the times that we're mm -hmm. in. Um, yeah. You can't do that to the taxpayer, especially after a 10% or whatever it was last year. It was high last year. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, I, I, I want to see, you know, the entire budget, you know, uh -huh. before I make too many comments, but okay. how, how do you guys usually do it? That's what the way we usually do it. We have uh, the departments to present it. So the next department would be the police. And then after that, it would be the office. And then after that, we do go through the whole thing. And, and that's why we're throwing out these numbers. You come back to me and say, look, you really okay. need to lower this or this. Go for it. Yeah. But at least if we're being realistic and I'm trying to explain everything to you. So that way, you know, if we are going to go less on something, well, then we'll make that sacrifice or, or whatever it is. But at least we have, you know, we you, obviously we put a lot of work into it and a lot of thought into it so that you understand that we really are looking at it. And we're trying to be realistic. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Any comments on this? Is there any, do, you said, you mentioned a little bit for reserves. Um, is there any way you can also get us out? So, I mean, I'm 
where the reserve, you know, where we'd pull some of this from or where, like, just for the reserves for the highway department, what those are, where they are, what they're allocated for, towards. Or is that simple? Is, is somebody asking a question? So Di Diane, Diane, yeah. Justin yeah. asked. Justin asked where the reserves are in the highway department, and it, can you show them what those reserves are? Certainly, and what I'll do is I'll send them to you an email tomorrow, if that's okay, because obviously I'm at home, so I can't look anything up, but um, I will definitely do that, and I'll send them out tomorrow to all of you, and I'll Excellent. show you all the different reserves, okay? So that way you'll know what we have for reserves. Thank you. Yep. Any other comments on this? Okay, hearing none, we'll take and convene the regular select board meeting. Um, with us tonight is um, uh, John Quinn, Justin Lawrence, Flo Smith. Uh, I'm Brad Town. Uh, also with us is uh, Tom Badowski, our town administrator, and Diane Isabel, <clears throat> Diane Isabel, the town treasurer. Uh, additions or changes to the agenda, Tom? Brad, we have a, a public hearing here for at seven o'clock for the oh. second phase of that public hearing. Oh, yes. Uh, Okay. Uh, uh, public hearing to hear the hear input regarding the adopted water wastewater ordinance. Uh, is there any comments on this? Uh, who is guest one, Tom? I don't know. I've asked and they haven't responded. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> again, any comments on this? Hearing none, we will take and uh, start with the select board meeting. There are no uh, additions or changes to the agenda. Okay. Uh, public comment. Hearing none, treasurer's report, Diane. Yes. Um, one thing I would like to set up is another um, budget meeting. Normally we have them like maybe the next week. And um, then I would like to have um, Chief uh, Pontbriand here and we can talk about that. Could we schedule one for next like Tuesday maybe, like at 6.30 or do you wanna wait until we do the December meeting and then I could have um, the rest of the um, budget. Because I would also have, that would give me time to work on the police as well as the town. So I, I guess I'm leaving it up to you. Do you want to have a special meeting for the police or do you want me just to put it all in the next meeting um, that we have in December, the first meeting in December? I think probably have a, we can do another meeting on Tuesday. Um, I think it's handy to uh, go through it line by line and then have the yeah. time to uh, look at it. True. Yep. I'm fine with that. So can we do that for next Tuesday at 6.30? John? John. I, I can't tell you offhand, probably. Um, I'll do my best to make it. <laughs> mm -hmm. that works I know right before Thanksgiving, so. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, Justin? I believe I could probably make it. Hello? I can make it. Okay, then we'll take and do it for, what do you want, Diane, six? You figure about a half hour? Yep, yeah. yeah, do you want to do it at six o'clock or 6.30? It's up to you, you tell me what time. Um, I think 6.30 will work. 6.30, okay, that's fine. Yeah, I think it'll be the same thing. It'll be a half an hour. Shouldn't be any more than that. Okay, I see okay. James is with us now. 
So, uh, are you going to be available, James? I missed the first part of this. Uh, setting up a, a time to go over your budget. What time are we thinking? Uh, Tuesday at 6 30. Tomorrow at 6 30? No, no. No, no. <laughs> no the week from tomorrow. <laughs> I saw a look of fear there. <laughs> yeah, we haven't gone, we haven't done the budget yet. <laughs> I'll be available to you guys. No. Um, yep, yeah, that should work. Okay. 24th at 6 p.m. Okay. 6 30, yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the other thing I have is, and I think I've given this to everybody, is the contractor's application for payment number five for Payne Turnpike North. If I can get an approval on that, uh, this is for $265,672.02. Can I get somebody to approve that? And then I will need a signature from the uh, chair. Your a motion? Yeah, I move to approve the payment to Dubois for $265,672.02. Here a second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Hold on, Brad, just one second, please. Yeah, um, just remind me what the scope of work here was for this money. It's the uh, uh, Payne Turnpike North sewer improvement project. Uh, got, it, that, got it. Okay, I missed the sewer part of that. Okay, thank you. Okay, and Brad, I did. I've given you the form, so you will sign the form tonight. Yeah. So, okay. so, as soon as, as I get approved, that. I know, but I want to make sure you have the form in front of you. Yeah. All those in favor of uh, me signing? Aye. 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 Brad, your, your audio is coming in and out. Motion so carries. I'm, Brad, your audio is coming in and out. I'm not quite sure why. Okay. Uh, you, you, I don't know if it's your headset or what, but it's, it's fading. So you may want to try it without the headset and see what happens. Well, um, let's see here. Just pull it out. Just pull your headset out. How's that? So far, so good. Okay. Um, let's see here. Uh, anything else, Diane? Nope. That's for me. That's good for me. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. I think I'll put that off a little bit. Uh, Fisher Road culvert, Tom? Yes, I, I uh, got a note from Robert uh, Clark from Otter Creek here uh, earlier this afternoon. Uh, they have, um, as you know, completed their, their topographic survey. They have, um, uh, the soil boring has been done and the, the the hydrogeologist has told Robert that they, the firm has not been able to complete for tonight's meeting the hydrogeologic work. They hope that they will give that to Otter Creek tomorrow. And so I anticipate at the next meeting, you'll have some definitive drawings and cost estimates. I was hoping to have it today. It just hasn't come to fruition. Um, uh, so, um, I really don't have any much, much to report on it, Brad. Okay. Thank you. Any uh, questions for Tom on this? Hearing none, um, VTrans alternative transportation grant, Tom. Yeah. And I apologize. I, I'm just having difficulty pulling up, um, uh, documents for everybody's viewing. So, so I sent to the select board. Uh, in advance of this meeting, the concept plan uh, that was developed for this VTrans alternate um, transportation project, and it's it's for the multi-use path in the in the in the town of Berlin's new new town center. As, as you know, Thursday we submitted the draft new town center and the neighborhood development area applications 
to the Department of Housing and Community Development. We've been talking for about two meetings now that VTRANS offers um, grant monies for scoping studies. The Planning Commission is recommending that the select board apply for a 50,000 total project cost of which 40,000 would be paid by this VTRANS grant 10,000 would be paid by the, the town of Berlin. Uh, it's, it'd be a scoping study connecting um, uh, the, the new town center to the Central for Vermont Medical Center. They have, a, they have a health and wellness set of paths down there. And also connect to uh, through the um, Berlin Corners Village Center uh, the, uh, the, the paths around uh, Berlin Pond and, in, and including the, the various trails on Irish Hill. At, at the end of the day, it's, it's looking to be about an eight or 10 mile uh, trail system that we're looking to connect. Uh, again, uh, it's, it's the scoping study for the linchpin, which I think is the Newtown Center connecting the the, the um, eastern edge of, of that with the western edge of the, what we have at Berlin Pond and, and Irish Hill. Again, it's a um, uh, $50,000 estimated project. 40,000 uh, would be uh, requested from VTRANS and 10,000 would be from the town of Berlin. The uh, 10,000 that we are going to supply, where is that coming from? I don't know, you tell me, I, I don't know. I'm sorry, it's, which part of the Central Vermont campus, would the, the new portion that would be in the town center or the existing portion were you talking about? Th their trails are back behind Woodridge, Justin, so it's it's really that part is not in the new town center. I could I could send you guys a uh, I got a map today from Central Vermont Medical Center of what it what their trails consist of. Yeah, I mean I think if we're going to spend ten thousand dollars as a town and, and we'll, even though you know a large portion of it's funded by grant, it would make sense to know exactly what we're spending it on prior to doing so. I agree. So yeah, that's 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 what the uh, the drawing that I sent you guys in advance. Um, uh, uh, detailed that that multi-use path. Uh, it's part of the that path is part of the uh, new town center application that was submitted for uh, Department of Community Housing Affairs review. Um, and again, it would connect the 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 path at the Central Mont Hospital to the to the Berlin Pond and Irish Hill uh, trail networks. This isn't for the actual work. This is just a planning phase. It's the, it's the scoping study. That's correct, John. The, the, the actual cost is, okay. the, but for VTRANS will, um, would pay for the cost of construction, but you have to have this, the, the planning phase first. Uh, so this is, you know, this is the first piece of that, uh, for that build out. Your motion. Yeah, all I'm seeing in here is just the one around the mall. What am I missing? Justin, we're, we can barely hear you. Oh, sorry. All I'm seeing on this one is the the one around the uh, the mall area. Uh, yes. I, yeah. Yeah. So the, the, I was curious about the rest of the trail networks you were talking, and, and hey, we haven't done a study on that. That's all we're spending this money on. Is that what that is? The. the um, what the scoping study will be that piece that you received, but it will ultimately connect the Central Vermont and the Irish Hill uh, Berlin Pond uh, uh, trails together. Um, I have a, um, I could send you guys, I could send it to you right now if, you, if you're near an email, I put together a, a quick uh, uh, plan for the, for the entire, uh, but again, this 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 is due on the twenty seventh, so this grant application is is a is a work in progress. But let me send you this 
Right. That's what that's what I thought you had said. You said, and I apologize. Um, that's why I was looking through it. Do you know how many other app uh, grants or things like this we're going to have to apply for in the process for this town center? I'm just curious. Oh, as many grants as we possibly can, I guess. I, I, I don't know the uh, a definitive amount. Um, so, no, I, I don't, as, but as okay. many as we possibly can get. So, so for $10,000, we get to take and have a, uh, uh, a scoping study to take and see the, to see what it would be to connect all, all our existing trails pretty much together. That's that's correct, and 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 to include the the new town center, it's true. Yeah. That's correct. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Uh, do I have a motion on this? Do we have this in a budget somewhere, Diane? We don't. But my my thoughts right now is, could we take that money out of the bike path reserve? Because we'd have it in there. I don't is, see why not. That be, yeah. That sounds but reasonable. Yeah. Because we can't do anything with that bike path money until, uh, unless it has something to do with a, a, a bike path. Correct. Yeah. Now, I can't tell you the exact amount that's in there, but I'm quite certain there's more than 10000 I thought it was around thirty-five. Something like that. I think so. But I know that, you know, each year we've been, you know, we've been doing more and more. Um, and we spent some, but I know we get at least 10. And when I send you all the stuff with reserves tomorrow, you'll see it in there. But yeah. I, I think that would be a good good place. Excellent. I think the last the last money we took out was for that bridge that's going in up above the, the dam mm -hmm. going across the river to the U32. Was it there? Okay, I knew there was something in Mount Pillier. Move to approve ten thousand dollars in uh, spending by the town out of the bike path fund for uh, this for the project for the scope. I second that. So uh, I, I have I have further comment. Is that what we actually need to do, or do we just need to um, vote to send in an application at this point? Uh, the, the application requires a commitment of funds, so okay, it's I, I, okay. I, I was just it. It sounded to me like we were applying for something, so I didn't want to get ahead of ourselves before we got anything. But okay, that's it. All those in favor? Oh, aye. 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 The pause. Um, I think you couldn't hear us, Brad. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is so much fun. Um, the Berlin uh, Corner Cemetery Association request for 10000 Tom. I, I, I put in your the select board's packets a request from that uh, cemetery association. Uh, I believe they requested and was were granted ten thousand dollars last year. They're requesting the same amount for uh, I, I believe it's it's at the town um, uh, meeting vote in two thousand and twenty one. Yeah, but I believe Tom they do have to go through. Um, the town clerk in order to put that to get that on to um, the ballots for March I'm, town meeting. I'm just I'm making the select board aware that they've requested it. Okay. okay. Very good. Um, uh, John use of town lands for recreation. Yeah, I just wanted to give a quick update that uh, we've been going back and forth with the conservation committee a little bit and uh, Josh Walker and the Barry uh, Snowmobile Club, uh, the Thunder Chickens and the Barry Club did submit a letter of interest today. Um, and I believe I forwarded it to you, all of you so you have a copy of it. Um, yep. I did hear from Phil uh, Gentilly at the Conservation Committee saying that um, they didn't have time to fully comprehend the, the letter of interest. So they were gonna need some more time to, to mull it over uh, before uh, and, and talk to the rest of the members before going any further. So uh, hopefully next meeting um, they'll have 
between now and the next meeting, they'll have some time to look at it and get back to, uh, you know, some kind of consensus. I, I don't know what the consensus is. I mean, we've been talking about it for a couple of weeks now on, but um, anyways, the letter of interest has been submitted. John, do you know how we're making out on any of the other deliverables, um, such as the maps of the town properties, et cetera? Um, I, uh, I believe um, Phil said he did send some maps in an easement or some easement language uh, to Brad, maybe. I, I believe the email said. Um, and John, John, I sent, yeah, he did. And I sent those to you and uh, uh, Mr. Walker uh, last week sometime. So they did, they have supplied those maps in that, in that easement. Why didn't we, why didn't Tom just question, why didn't you share those with the, the board? Like, why didn't I get a copy? I'm curious about that. Did, did Phil send it to me? He, he did, yes. Yeah, I haven't looked at my email, so I'll take in, uh, I'll take in, uh, I can't do it from my phone, but when I get home, I'll take and send it up to you, Tom. You can distribute it. I didn't realize they hadn't gone to everyone. Um, so, so we do have those maps now, and I talked with uh, Josh Walker tonight, um, and uh, you know he's ready to help wherever needed as far as the mapping uh, goes to to further the project. Um, as far as any of the other deliverables, I, I don't believe. Um, I don't believe I've heard anything else on any of the other ones, but um, if someone else has uh, received them, please let me know. It seems like email is getting away from me. Yeah, I, I just like it if any of the deliverables were sent to the entire board. So if Tom, you get them or whatever, if you can forward them to all board members, I think that would be a great way for clarity. What was that, Justin? Well, I'm thinking I was curious. I asked Tom why why I didn't get a copy of the maps when they were sent out. If you, if you just emailed John and Josh and Walker. Um, I don't think, I think we probably don't need to be siloed. I think it would be great if the whole board got a copy of all of those deliverables as they came in or as they were available so that we're all on the same page. I think it's probably the most efficient way to handle this. The as I understand it, they sent it to me, and I haven't uh, been through my emails. Well, Tom had mentioned he Tom had mentioned he sent it out to John and Josh Walker as well. Something that just the two of them. So I just wanted clarification on that. Oh, I don't know if it's the same stuff. That's the thing, but I don't think I I got it either. Yeah, Brad, it was it was to you, and I was copied on it. So so I sent it to yeah. to John and Josh as the folks that were preparing the the next step. I'll, I'll send, I'll send, I could send it out to everybody. It's not, that's not an issue. Okay. Uh, I'll set the, uh, uh, John. Yep. Okay. Um, minutes for October 19th, 2020. Have a motion on that. I make the motion to approve the minutes of October 19th, 2020. I'll second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, use of town owned Coos Trail property. Yes, I sent everybody a copy in their uh, packet. And I wish Tim was still on this call because this came through Tim. Um, uh, Mr. Richard Rand Randu um, said he has uh, been contracted to log uh, some property and uh, near the, the the property that the town has uh, on Coos Trail, and um, uh, uh, he's asked that the 
he be allowed to use that property for the landing area on his uh, for his um, duration of his logging, and that's the um, uh, the note that I sent you. I, I followed up with him saying I, I believe the town would need a two million dollar general liability coverage uh, uh, in being named the town as additional insured before they would give it any consideration. I don't. I I know uh, uh, select board several meetings ago wanted to that any time somebody wanted to use town property, the select board wanted to weigh in on that and uh, make that decision. So I'm, I'm just putting this out here for, for you folks discussion. So down on Kuaz Trail, they want to use the, the, the town property down there, the off to the, what is it on the left side of the road? I think it's where the stump dump is, Brad. Yeah, yeah. They want to use that for their landing. Correct. And uh, personally, I see no problem with it as long as they have the insurance and as long as the uh, contract states that they will uh, return the property to the existing condition. And I would take and say probably a, um, a bond of some sort. Is, does the town have an existing contract for things like this? I don't believe so. I think we take and usually take it case by case. Okay. All right. Why um, wouldn't we ask them to improve that land a little bit? Like, you know, I mean, they're going to tear it up. I mean, wouldn't we maybe plant something different, like some clover, or, you know, actually just, I don't know, Brad, um, clean up well, around trees for us while they're down there well as long as they take and put the property back into its present condition and i not i think it is i think it is uh i think it is a uh, grassland right now it's been a long time since i've been down there but um what about you john what's your thoughts on it Trying to find my mute button here. Um, I, I don't know the property that well. I know I know where it is. I just don't know the the property that well. I've I've never been down in there. That's yeah. that's what what they where they used to call the old dump, right? Yeah, the stump dump. Yeah. Um, I mean, the land is pretty vacant now, so I don't. My personal my personal feelings are let them go at it. But as, uh, like I said, there should be some safeguards for the town and the, having the land put back at least as good a condition as it was when they started. Now, if they're logging in the winter and they plow it and freeze it down, there's not much damage they're going to do to it. It'll just be uh, cleaning up some brush or bark residue. I, I think probably, as long, and I'm, I'm sure they do, as long as they have insurance and there's a memor memorandum of understanding on, you know, what we expect from them, you know, such as being put back to at least, you know, grass um, or, you know, original condition. Yeah. I, I don't have that. I don't have a major problem with it. Well, neither do I. I think it's fine. Yeah. Well, Tom, if you can take and get a, get a uh, contract uh, drawn up or whatever and, See what we can do. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll put something together, send it around to you guys, and you can take a look at it. Okay, thank you, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Uh, round table. Uh, Flo, you're on mute, Flo. Round table, Flo. Not tonight, but thank you, John. Uh, nothing tonight. Justin? Nothing. No. Nope. Oh, okay. Um, motion to enter to executive. Uh, before you go into that, can you, can you approve personnel the, and contract? Um, Brad, hold on. Oh, a minute? Oh, yeah. Um, 
Brad, you're breaking up again. I don't know why. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, okay. Um, uh, motion. Had, I, Brad, Brad, yes. Diane had some other business here. Yeah, can you approve the license permits and vouchers? Yeah, I was just going back to those. Okay. Um, I need a motion. Uh, does anybody have the payroll warrant? I have it in front of me. I make a motion to approve the payroll warrant 21-10 for okay. payroll October 20th. I need a motion for the, uh, yep. Okay. I make a motion for payroll warrant 21-10 for payroll from October 25th, 2020 to November 7th, 2020, paid on November 10th, 2020 in the amount of $40,891.58. Also payable warrant 21-G10 with checks 2677 to 2719 in the amount of $42,562.74 as well as October general journal ent entries and October reconciled bank statements for the general fund, sewer commission and water division, October trial balance, budget status report and delinquent tax report. Thank you. Your second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, motion to enter an executive session for personnel and contract. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion you expect carries. action. You expect any action, Brad? Uh, some. Okay. Uh, are you going to like go into a breakout room or? What's that? So you're going to go into a breakout room so I can hang on the whole day. Oh, to, David, I'll, I'm going to put you into the uh, in the waiting room again. Okay. <sighs> All set now, Tom? No, not yet. No. Nope. Okay, the Berlin Select Board has ex exited executive session at 8.07 p.m. You there, Dave? Yes. Okay. As far as the request for officers from the chief, we have a motion. Make a motion. Uh, to hire uh, Stephen Tiersch and Victor Hanajosa um, to the Berlin Police Department. I second that motion. Any as further full, comment? As full-time officers. As, yes, as, as full-time officers, excuse me. Okay. Any other comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. All set, Chief? Yep, we're good to go. I'll okay. let the guys know in the morning. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Chief. Uh, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. We're out of here. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good evening. Hey, Tom. Yes, David. How do you spell Victor's last name? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hold on, I gotta. Uh, I'll get it here for you. H capital H I N O J O S A. And are they already through the academy or 
No, is, they are they are currently part time, uh, and we're offering them full time positions. So will they have to go to the academy? Eventually, yes. Okay. And where does that bring the department up to? I mean, are there, are you, are there two vacancies? I'm going to play, plead ignorance here, here Dave. We should, Chief's gone. Gone, not, you know, yeah, there gone. are, there, yes, there, there are, uh, there are vacancies that they're, they're filling. They're already budgeted positions. Right. But uh, does this bring them to full strength or no? Um, I don't believe so. I believe they, they would still be one down. Okay. My math is correct. All right. Hey, well, thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah, mate. Thank okay. you. Carl, I'll call you in a little bit. Okay. Good night, everyone.